Hi, my name is Benedict. First up, apologies for the um, the little hassle with the, the video. I don't know why, ever since Reason 10.3, having issues, which means I'm having to use um, ASIO for all and a few things uh, settled on my system, but props promise that it will be fixed soon, so they're, they're normally very, very good. What this video is going to be about, as you probably guess from the title, what led you here, is the Arturia uh, CZV. So they, they've made an emulation of the Casio CZ. Where I come in on this is that I had a CZ. I had a CZ1000. I bought it in 1988. They were a couple of years old then. I paid $350 in Australia for that and the Casio SZ1, which was a little sequencer. And I can say it is the nastiest sequencer ever made, with the possible exception of Fruity Loops. But it was a horrible thing. But it, it kind of got me going. Uh, but the synth itself is unique. There is nothing out there that sounds like a CZ. You can make it sound like other things, but there's not really anything I've ever heard that actually sounds like a CZ. The way the waves were created was vaguely similar to Yamaha's FM, which was a kind of phase modulation in the first place, but it was unique. There's, there's nothing that sounds like it. So, of course, when I saw that Arturia had done this, I know they've done lots of other things, and their synths are cool, not necessarily 100%, but they are cool. Um, I couldn't help but grab one to have a look. But before we jump, jump too far into that, that Casio CZ sound, if you use it for what it is, it can be wonderful or incredibly frustrating because it can be quite cardboardy, as you'll hear. Uh, or as once you start adding effects and processing to it, you can actually lose that sound. The same with all synths. You know, the more you process them, the less they sound like that synth. The more they sound like just a generic process sound. So I'm going to take you back to some genuine CZ sounds. This is from 1989, so a year after I got my CZ. This is recorded back then in the little tape hiss. You can hear the nature of that sound. drums, everything in your hear, you hear in here are actually CZ, uh, and if I recall correctly, because uh, I know it was written that way, the CZ had a multi-timbral mode, so the 1000 would allow me to play four monophonic sounds at once, which was super cool. Uh, and uh, so this whole track was made of that, There's, you, you kick this need bass and the leads, everything's done that way originally, I think this is still done that way. Basically it goes on like that. It's not, I'm not saying it's a great song, but that dry, brash sound that can be very meaty is, is very technical. This is a little bit later, but not much. Same thing. Very, very typical of that sound. I know it's not a great quality recording. Here's one that's a bit better. You can really hear a CZ sound very clearly. And if I recall correctly, quite a few of the sounds in this mix were again from the CZ and still in that multi-tambral mode. This bass definitely is. So you can hear very typical CZ sounds there. Now we'll go to 
the device. I'll open it up now. I haven't bought it yet. If if I do at all, but I do like it. If I had tons of money, I probably would buy it. Uh, at the moment, I've not got tons of money, so it's it's a mm. uh, so. When we open it up, we get something that looks more like a CZ101, which was the miniature cut down. Yes, it had better buttons on it, but it had miniature keys. Uh, and I know a lot more of those were sold because they were cheap as chips. Same engine, but I had the 1000, which was a little bit bigger for it, the full size keys, membrane buttons which ran all along and each button gave you access to the whole thing and then was controlled with that little data up and down pair on, on the side. You really had to be able to see in your head what the sound looked like to be able to program it, which meant that some people hated it. I had a love-hate relationship with it because of that sound, but I loved it more than I hated it. Um, this tries to simplify it. Now, obviously not very programmable of the main thing. Now, the sound, of course, is actually really quite CZ. It's, uh, they've managed to, I won't say nail, because there are some problems here, if we want to get technical. But they've managed to get quite a bit of that sound. To program it, we click and it opens up. They have had to shave some edges off the true CZ system. You do have options for different types of uh, envelopes because the CZ had an eight-point envelope. So it was a multi-stage envelope generator, and you could have up to eight points. In here, they've kind of changed that around a little bit, but I don't think most of the time they've done they've the right thing. Sorry, I mean, I think most of the time they've done the right thing. Sometimes it's just a tiny bit frustrating, but you get used to it. They've kept most of the strange characteristics, but they have rolled in on most of the patches a certain amount of performance information. The, uh, the 101s and the 1000s in particular, I think the 3 and 5s might have been as well, uh, they weren't velocity sensitive. You, you had no real control. The sound was on, the sound was off which is part of why they could tend to sound quite cardboardy, because they were on or off, on or off, on or off, on or off. Um, and, and there was no ability to control anything in real time at all. They have also added effects. The original CZ was very dry. That sounds like it's got reverb, but it's using the trick that we all used at the time, which was to use very long releases to, to mimic having a on the thing. Get rid of that and it's super dry sounding. But strength and weakness. Uh, adding in the chorus, the 3000, I had one for a little while, and the 5000 did have a chorus, hissed like a bastard. Was it a good chorus? I don't know, but it hissed like a bastard. So I never used it. it. It was bad. Everything hissed back then, but this was bad. It was it was quite horrifyingly hissy. Um, let's just tidy that up. Now you can run single oscillator, where we're getting quite a bit of that CZ feel. Check the second oscillator, you could them, run them in a pair of one plus one. So it was taking the one oscillator, duplicating it, so obviously using the secondary engine without you having to program it, because it was essentially two synthesizers sitting in there at once. And then you could detune it. To fatten up. Of course you can. And then you could run this to discrete synthesizers. Uh, in the 1000, you could have you could run in single voice mode with eight voices, amazing. Or you could run in dual, either of these, back to four voices. Or as I said, you could go into multi timbral mode and then have four, I can't remember if you could have a full eight-part multi-timbral, but it was single oscillator, but you could definitely have four-part multi-timbral 
So four discrete sounds coming out of this one box. So it's just so, so useful. The only thing before that, I think, that I've been able to do that with little sequential six tracks, which was a cool synth, but oh, I've only ever found one in my life, and unfortunately it was <laughs> totally insane, which is a shame, because I would have bought it. Um, so we've got that nice CZ sound. I'm going to go to, I'm not going to run through presets because there are going to be lots of other videos out there that do that. I'll go to a default patch. Got a pitch envelope. Which initially you think, what the hell am I going to do with that? But it turns out to be surprisingly useful down the track. Digitally controlled wave. So what you hear here is no matter what wave source you choose, it's a sine wave. And you can then deform that. Which you can see happening in the window, which you couldn't see in the original. That didn't exist in the original. You simply had your eight point envelope. So if you wanted it to, you also had eight points. This is giving me a simpler multi-stage. If you wanted to create this kind of thing in the original, you had to simply keep adding points. So you'd add a point there and a point there. So you've got sort of hexagonal <laughs> shaped envelopes. Which was actually part of the charm of the sound because every time you went to solve a problem, you solved it uniquely. Wonderful for brass sounds. The CZ is really known for its brass sounds. It's not like a CZ brass sound. If other people tried. Cool thing, so. Now that's not accurate. That is not accurate because in the original, the envelopes would trigger again. So each time. And if you go back to that uh, Plastic Anger album and listen to Poison Gas, you'll hear a kind of Angus Young ACDC guitar line that's done. Hold down one key, use the other one. Cool stuff. That was a, a not entirely unique feature, but the way the CZ did it was just either really annoying or super cool. I, I chose not to fight it, so it was super cool. They offer a digital audio converter, a DAC emulation. I haven't read anything. No idea what it's doing because I can't hear a noticeable difference. What I can hear is that this, this thing sounds far too clean. I don't know the numbers on the CZ's uh, digital to audio converter because it was 100% digital in size, just maths. Spatted out a, a, a single guitar jack on the other end. But it was relatively low resolution. So it was dirty, it was messy, and as soon as you got up into these higher keys, there's no way this would work. Like here, it actually sounds accurate, it's over sampled and this and the other, but it had a relatively low Nyquist frequency. It was probably. As soon as it hit about eight or something like that, it folded back on itself. So it wasn't uncommon that as you got into the upper octave on my four octave keyboard, C1, by the time you've gotten up into here, these higher notes, sort of C and up, were starting to have bounce back, ghastly alias noising inside, noises inside there. I am disappointed that they have not put that into this device. These days, I think with an emulation, that's part of the CZ sound, the way that that bounced back and just sounded, well, like shit. But 
it was something that we dealt with. And so the string sounds and things like that would have that in there. By all means, make your other modes where there's no emulation. Make a mode where it's emulated but clean and tidy. And then give us a true, this is how bad it really sounded mode, because that's what we worked with in the day. You know, Vince Clark and myself and, and lots of other people who loved these devices, we worked with that sound. So I think it's a little mean not to give it to us when by rights they should be able to do something that bad because to sound this good, they've solved a lot of problems. <laughs> Again, I won't go too far into the features. Another strange thing, and the CZ had, and you can see it on their, their picky up here, eight preset waveforms. Each line would carry two waveforms at once. But something that they've done here, which again, understand it's a fix, but it's also a break. Something that the CZ did, and I'll, and I'll show you later uh, how it really sounds, is that when you first started, you had a sawtooth in your first slot and nothing in your second slot. You could then go through and add. But when you added your second waveform, it made the waveform twice as long, so it effectively dropped an octave. And that was an important part of the CZ sound. They say you can upload CZ patches in here. I haven't looked at how accurate they are, but this is inaccurate. These sound okay, but they sound wrong because the combinations are not correct. It's a, it, it's a different set of maths that they've used. Something this does have that the CZ never had is custom. So the only way you can actually turn off one of these slots is to put it to custom and then turn both of those halves down. I haven't spent a lot of time on this, but it looks like you've got a base and a target. So the base being a nothing or a sine wave or something like that. And then your target being where it'll go to as you turn up the modulation. That allows you to get rid of it completely. But you can't emulate that strange drop an octave thing because as far as I'm aware, when you put the two together, they drop an octave because your oscillator is suddenly twice the length, but they don't sound the same as if I put two, two forms in a slot there and then drop this by an octave. They don't seem the same. Uh, so it's, it, it's a nice solution because it doesn't create the break that the CZ had, but it's a bad solution because it doesn't recreate what a CZ was. And part of what the CZ really was, was all these things that it did wrong, um, the failings it had. Sounds really nice, but it sounds too much like an analog. It doesn't sound like a CZ. And that's a beautiful sound. And the CZs were very capable of sounding very analog -y. It didn't have envelopes that were shaped, that was just the script. So that's some of that feel. Plus your envelope and envelopes. I, I honestly do find these envelopes a bit of a pain in the ass to work with. Um, you can drag them back, so you can get used to it, but it's a pain in the ass to work with. I found a better solution. Trying to solve a problem and creating another one at the same time. I, as you see, I'm sort of trying to work out how to go somewhere every time. I don't think the way that when you have two oscillators in this together, I don't think the way that they interact with each other is the same. Now, they may be the same inside the box, 
and maybe it was where it hit that digital audio converter that it distorted or something, but somehow one oscillator sounds a bit better than two. I mean, the two sound good, don't get me wrong, it's a nice sounding synth. I'm not going to say that it's a bad sounding synth, it sure ain't. same result as you do from the real one. Now the real one had a couple of interesting tricks up its sleeve as well. Ring modulator. Often a great way just to create horrible noises. Unlike the original, you can control that amount. This is reasonably well done. Get rid of the pitch. The way that it does that, that pulsing as you detune. That's very much a thing that the CZs did. When you combine two oscillators, you could get some really kind of cool sounds. Oh, bloody envelopes. Where are they going? There. There's also a noise mode. The noise is actually made up digitally. It's not a separate noise generator. It's just applying noise to the... Again, they've given you a, an amount of control you didn't have on the original CZ. But it's not like a normal noise source. You've also got the additional, more traditional noise source and the addition of colour from there as well, but that's separate from this. Which is impressively ghastly. See, it was once you got your head around how it worked, it was quite cool. I'm, I'm struggling to get my head around this because it's quite different. Um, and given time, I could get used to it. You've got access to the envelopes separately, and you can see how they relate to one another, which you definitely couldn't in the original. I don't have a real problem with that because I learned this way the, of having to know in my head what was what, but nothing against it. You get a couple of extra envelopes. That's all cool, you've got some presets, things that you can attach, and those different types of envelopes. So the, the straight CZ one, which, as I say, feels close to unusable. Uh, DADSR, which, again, it's just too easy to lose the envelopes, You're just like, yeah, screw you. Uh, so the, um, the multi-stage envelope generator seems the, the most usable of the lot, and I think it's a shame. Uh, I think with the problems they've got, they would have been better off saying, here's exactly the info interface that you had on the CZ, because that's part of how and why we programmed the way they did. Um, modulations, there's a fair amount of stuff that you can do there. Haven't played with it a little bit at all, uh, but it's there, and obviously that was something we didn't have on an original CZ. It's... Um, it expands your palette, that is for sure. I'm a big modulation guy, um, but it wasn't there on a CZ. I have limited time I've had so far. I'm more interested in how this can sound or is it going to.
So it's quite a nice thing. There are elements of, flavours of Casio CZ, thank you, timed out, but I don't think that it's a real CZ. Now, having made CZ emulations myself, I can say I've never heard anything like a CZ. There are things about it on several levels, including the things that were frustrating about it that make that CZ sound. And where it works in a mix, there is nothing like that sound. You, you heard in the fantasy track, the last one that I played you, that bong, 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 bong. And the other sounds of it is just awesome sound. You could say, oh, yeah, but I could do that with FM, but no, you can't. It won't sound that way. As a little extra for watching these, and if you happen to be a reason person, I have made a few sounds in um, Thor. Now, Thor came standard with a couple of phase modulation oscillators. They are, again, have elements of a good CZ sound and fail in other ways. Not as elegant sounding, not as smooth sounding or rich overall as the Arturia. But then this is a much simpler, far more efficient device and it's a lot older, so there isn't as much fancy code going on inside here. But I'll run through these these sounds. And I have taken a few little liberties to, for, for a slightly more modern taste, but as much as possible, you'll see I'm not using filters. Some of the coolest sounds in the Arturia synth turn out to rely on the filter effect that's built in, which is a nice filter. Don't get me wrong, it's a very nice filter. But they rely on that to make the instrument sound cool rather than the, um, the, the, the PD method. So, this is built around. Actually, I'll just up the volume on this a little bit because Arturia sounds good because it's loud. This, I've kept these a bit more to the, the right volumes. So something you can't do in a real set is CZ, but I've taken line one and line two, separated them out. Actually, before I go too far, far further, I'm going to show you what I said I was going to show you and then promptly forgot. So Thor, let's load us a Thor. So. Phase modulation. We'll turn off the filter. So that's a single oscillator. Sometimes sounds CZ, commonly kind of doesn't. But here's what happens when we start adding in a second. You have that drops. They've done this right. They've literally said, okay, we're going to double the length of your waveform. Not put the two side by side. You assume that it's putting the two side by side, like a, uh, a Roland SH or something like that, where it says, okay, we'll give you these two shapes and we'll put them on side by side, and they're phase locked. And these are phase locked, but they just stick, the Casio is stuck the second one onto the end of the first one, doubling your wavelength, therefore dropping an octave. Unfortunate, but part of the sound and in itself kind of cool because the reality is when you lift that an octave, it actually doesn't sound like it would if you just kept them on the same octave. So there's something that goes, there's some other math, something that goes wrong at that point. But the fact that you can combine a couple of waveforms meant that you had a lot of versatility. Like FM, a lot of your stuff happens quite subtly here. Nothing wrong with that, it's just the nature of the beast. I notice a lot of modern instruments tend to change that around a little bit, and sometimes I've asked developers to do that as well. 
so that you get a little less distinction here, but effectively this sweet spot in here acts, covers, comes up more to say here than here, just giving you a little bit more usable throw. But that can confuse you as to why one FM or digital synth sounds nicer than another. If Honest in using, a, I guess, what we might call a linear throw here. You've got to be careful how much you turn the knob. But if they've created a curve in there, then it can make them seem a lot friendlier or warmer. Now we're tied to the, the um, envelopes built into Thor already. But they're cool envelopes. Another thing about this, the CZ, which was built into the original CZ, but I didn't notice it in here, it probably relies on the mod matrix, was that as we go up, each sound gets brighter. So it's the equivalent of having a filter and having the key follow always turn to 100%. Not very realistic for most real sounds. So you tend to need to use your voice key. And turn it down as you did on the CZ. So there's more phase distortion, so like filter is more open here than it was up here. But that was part of the CZ sound, that's part of what what you, you worked with. But being digital and having a, a phase locked to key on made them really rather nice for bass sounds. Not the same. Sometimes it sort of is, other times. It just isn't. But, given a fair understanding of the CZ, you can get some quite nice results. That wasn't sounding so polite, then that would sound quite CZ. Uh, what I've done, I've used one saw oscillator, one resonant wave, because they had no filter. It was all done, but they had gave me some resonant waves, which we'll play with a bit more in a moment. And they could sound quite good, they could sound fake. Well, they can sound quite good. Uh, sort of a vaguely MS-20 kind of lead sound, again using a pair of resonant waves and the ability to morph between the two of them with a mod wheel. Don't think that they're going to sound like a, an MS anything, they don't, but they actually give you a really cool sound that's quite cutting. <laughs> 
Here you can hear that, that trick with the... Um... I've got old and, slow, old and slow, but with a little bit of practice you get good at it and you can pretend to be Malmsteen. Um, the, the, the Thor naturally has the ability to do that. But in turn... You can hear that flat, papery, cardboardy sound in there. Tempting to, to add lots of effects to smooth that off, but as I say, then your sound becomes a bit generic. Uh, when you find the right position for it, when you fit that in your mix nicely, it's just it stands out. It's it's very cool. <laughs> That uses ideas that are quite CZ, doesn't really sound the same, but it's kind of cool. These you could definitely do in spades, but I've used, I've, I've cheated a little bit here to use the, the if I have it. They're prone to sounding a little bit more organy. In reality, that sounds probably more like a Casio VZ, which was a more FM kind of thing and had a much, much cleaner, uh, I think it was a full 16 bit converter, it was much cleaner sound. This or the Arturia will do that sort of sound very, very nicely. When you're subtle, and you pay lots of little bit of attention, well, lots of attention to little bits, and you can get beautiful sounds out of it. Which, again, is very FM Yamaha type of thing, but the CZs give you a different sort of a sound to it. But again, if it was a real CZ, the converters don't sound that clean. Uh, so, so you've got a, a grainier 8-bit um, sound to it. Exactly what it is, I don't know. But I've never heard anybody emulate it properly. And I know you go, oh, but just put a, um, put a bit crusher on it. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> You can hear that really nice static cardboardy CZ sound in there, even though it doesn't really sound like a one. The CZ style is quite a lot like the, um, the FM in Subtractor, in that it can create ugly sounds very easily, and you can hate on that and go, well, it doesn't sound like you know, Jupiter 8 or whatever. No, they never did. Um, they were a terrible Jupiter 8, which was always my frustration. Or you can say, okay, what can I do with that? And if you apply that and sculpture those sounds, or sculpt those sounds, and accept them for what they are, you can make some really lovely sounds that are unique in your mix. The CZs were pretty good for organs. My father was a cathedral organist and he was quite intrigued by my CZs. He was aware of synthesis and, and had some interest in it because that was all an up and coming thing when he was a young man and playing great big five manual pipe organs in Germany and Britain. Uh, he was quite impressed with the, the sound that you could create through control of those waveforms and he even, he even sort of had thoughts of like oh, what if I got a couple of these synths and I wouldn't need to make pedals for 
my pipe organ because he'd made harpsichords and he was always thinking of making another pipe organ. The house probably would collapse under it. And you know, you, you need 32 foot to put a 32 foot pipe in, and that's a lot of footage in a house. So he was actually thinking, well, okay, what if I gave myself a synthesizer to handle the bass? So he was already kind of reinventing the Moog Taurus, Moog Taurus, depending on where we live. Again, it's taking the CZ ideal and, and sort of reinventing it in a modern sense, so it sounds more like a VZ. Uh, this is very typical, except it's just a little too sweet. That top end goes up far too nicely for, for a real CZ. It should chop off and get all grainy. And not to mention up here, the alias seem like a bastard. That kind of static, solid sound is, is very CZ uh, if we take the effects off. Quite typical, but with but it's still too smooth. That's the, the issue both with this and with the, the Arturia, that it's, they've solved too many of the problems that were part of the sound. And this is definitely a thing about CZs, and even surprisingly enough, um, Yamaha's FM. If you know what you're doing, Do some very analog sounding, particularly basses, which have the advantage of that tide locked phase. So every note starts right on the beginning of the of the wave shape, and where you've got a couple of oscillators, they start right together, which makes them very tight and very punchy. So a lot of these sorts of sounds through the 80s that we just kind of stupidly assumed were actually analog were digital. You know, run from um, Casios, the CZs, um, Salt and Pepper, I used them obviously there in the video. Uh, they're used by a lot of people, um, as I said, Vince Clark uh, of the Erasure, you can use them in DM. Um, use these all the time. Uh, the FM synths, so you, or if you listen to the Human Leagues Louise, I should imagine that the, that the, the, the horn lead is probably a DX7, is my guess. It may have been a CZ, I don't really know for sure, but it's digital. The other thing that most of us don't realise was, or didn't at the time, was that the Fairlight and the Synclavia were also doing FM, like the Fairlight had a lot of FM in it. And so if you listen to Ice House, the Australian act, uh, or the Reels, they made stuff, a whole record. One of their, their first records was, was a Fairlight advert. Uh, but Ivor Davies of Ice House loved his Fairlight. Everything was done in it. So if you listen to the second album on, like Primitive Man on, it's all Fairlight. But the CZs were very cool at, at, at analog and analogs. Also very good, like FM, very good for creating subtle fake electric pianos. And if you're thinking, oh, geez, I'm not going to play Chopin on that, no, you're not. But inside a mix. These just sound gorgeous. Oh, you are hearing cut notes because I'm keeping the, the polyphonic limit there, which is part of the CZ thing. They ran out of notes. <laughs> and I'm being kind and giving you eight. I remember it was four on 1000. Put that on my 
a, a matrix and um, mm. assign it, and, and you'll be like, oh, I know what that's about. So for that going ping. Again, combination of effects. That's quite CZ, but the problem we've got is when I keep saying this, and more so with the, the, the CZV, the Arturia, is just that it's too clean on the top end. That's a pretty good indicator of what you would have got. I think it would have been a little bit coarser as a sample rate or whatever it was. You didn't hear it as like a nine inch nails record with that crystallized crap all over the top of it. It just, I don't know, there was some kind of low resolution thing to it which made it kind of chunky and it didn't have that smooth top end. But you can hear some of that texture in, in this sand here. That's a lot, but I'll um, I'll pop a link under there. Uh, I'll just pop these online. They won't necessarily be there forever. So you've, if you've come to this video and it's been quite some time since this video was posted, those sounds may not be there anymore. But I'll pop them online for a while. Uh, so if you happen to be a reason person or a person with Thor, then you can have access to those. As for the the Arturia CZV. I think it's a, a very interesting synth, and if you want an interesting synth out of which you are going to get different results, and you're not going in going, oh, oh great, another citrus or, or something like that, then I think that you could get a lot of mileage out of the instrument. If you're like me, thinking, geez, I wish I could have a real CZ again, but you don't want to give a house room to hardware, is that the answer? depends how driven you are about your CZ being authentic. Yes, you will hear some CZ-ism in it for sure, but then you'll also lose it when you go for the, the, the things that really frustrated us but drove us to end up sounding like CZs. So your sample rate, whatever it is, your bit rate, sample rate, is just wrong. Even with the, the, um, the emulated digital audio converter turned on, it's wrong. The lack of aliasing in the top sounds like a godsend. There should be a button there where we have the option to put it back in. The envelopes are a little bit of an abortion, unfortunately. I am sorry, Arturia, but they are a little bit of an abortion. Um, I think that there would have been better ways of doing that. I understand emulating exactly the screen as it was is not fashionable these days, but I think you probably could have come up with a better way than these envelopes that slide, and several times I found myself unable to manage the whole envelope. Just unable to. It just seemed to just lock, and that was it. There was, there was no way I could get my envelope back in control. Not cool at all. Um, the effects are nice. Uh, the filter sounds great, but it doesn't belong there. I'm glad that it was put out into the effects units and not somehow tacked into the synth. That would have been a real abomination. Um, why you didn't emulate the two oscillators in the one slot dropping the octave, whatever that math was, why you didn't emulate that, I don't know. I understand you're fixing the problem, but I think there should be a button there so that we can have it work like it should We'll press the fix. It's it's not right the way it is. It doesn't sound like a CZ. So if you're after flavors of, or you want to investigate, you'll get you'll get maybe fifty percent of the way there. It's a little bit further than Thor, but Thor was never meant to be a CZ. It just gave us the, the, some of the flavor inside the oscillator. But if you want to investigate it and you've got the hundred dollars to put down, I think it's a powerful synth if you've got the time and the inclination to understand it. 
will I get it? Like I say, right now I don't have $100 to be putting down on synths, unfortunately, really unfortunately. Um, I would be tempted because, despite those frustrations, there's an instrument in there that is different. It's not exactly a CZ, but it's not exactly not a CZ either, but it's definitely not another synth exactly the same as everything else I've got. And that alone would probably be what got me over the line more than the CZ-ism. I hope that's of some help to you somehow, either on just a primer on CZ or the opinion of somebody who really had and loved CZ for 10, 20 years um, on how it might stack up against the real thing. Thank you.